Hey YouTube, it's Austin. I just tested the Canon RF 14 to 35 millimeter underwater, and I'm here to tell you about it. So you might be wondering, Austin, you only just got this lens. Why in the world would you take it underwater and risk ruining it? Well, the answer is that I actually bought this lens with the intention of using it underwater. I love underwater photography. I do it all the time, photographing our local sea turtles and other marine life, but I only have a fisheye lens. And the problem with that fisheye lens is that to photograph something, you have to get really, really close. That's problematic, either when you don't want to get close to an organism or when the animal doesn't want you getting close to it. So I went out yesterday to Electric Beach with two of my friends, Richard, who you've seen in a previous video up here, and Brian Green, and I will link to his channel right now up in the corner. Brian has an awesome kind of cinema 6K Z cam and just a fantastic rig, and he was willing to go out and help me get some video for this. So you're going to see some clips from him throughout this video. I will attribute them down in the corner, and you're also going to see video from this lens on my EOS R body. Now, as a reminder, the EOS R does not have in-body image stabilization, but this lens has five stops of image stabilization. So with that, let's talk about what makes this lens fantastic for underwater photography and a couple issues with it as well. Topic number one is how you actually use this lens underwater. I shoot in an Eichlite housing, an Eichlite DL housing for the Canon EOS R. And Eichlite was actually nice enough to let me borrow a dome port extension. You need a 50 millimeter dome port extension to shoot with this lens in that housing. So what I did was I designed and 3D printed my own little friction fit zoom gear. This is pretty common throughout the underwater photography realm, and I'm going to put the files for this down in the description totally for free, just for anyone who's trying to shoot either this lens or a similarly sized lens in their Eichlite DL housing. I have to say thank you a thousand times over to Eichlite for sending me a dome port extension so I could actually conduct this test. I personally do not have the budget to test a lens that I'm not sure if it's going to work underwater. And I'm in that situation because this lens is so new and it's so backordered that tests are not easily available to watch online. So I'm hoping this test helps some of you decide if this is the right lens for you to use in your underwater setup. However, this is not a promotion or advertisement for Eichlite. I bought my Eichlite housing with my own money. I really appreciate their support, but I promise you all the views in this video are my own. Okay, so enough desk talk, let's hit the water. Welcome to Electric Beach. And the first thing I wanted to get out of the way were some video tests. So this is a short clip at 1080p. And this is a short clip at 4K IPB. Of course, 4K is cropped on the EOS R. Both look pretty good to my eyes. As Richard, Brian, and myself made our way farther out onto the reef, I found myself taking a lot of close focus wide angle shots like this and like this shot at 14 millimeters. All of this was done with natural light, no strobes. Overall, really happy with the results. And pretty quickly after we arrived on the reef, Brian found this moray eel. So I got in there at 14 millimeters, captured him photographing the eel, and then when he was done, I punched into 35 millimeters and took this shot. Zooming into the image, I am really, really happy with the details here. It is sharp where it needs to be sharp, right around the eye, and this is on the EOS R, which does not have any sort of eye detect for animals. This was just AI servo. Farther along on the reef, Richard and Brian found this coral colony, and next to the coral colony was this scorpion fish, which I was able to shoot at about 24 millimeters. If we zoom in on the image, we can see again that the autofocus on this lens with the EOS R is doing a really excellent job, even on an organism that is as camouflaged as this one is. While trying to get some video of the scorpion fish, it actually swam off, and in the process allowed me to test the video autofocus. Did a really good job for how well camouflaged this fish is. A little while later, we were on the hunt for eels. Richard got in close with his Eichlite setup to get a shot. 
I went out to 14 millimeters to capture that process and that action. And then I went in close to 35 millimeters to really capture this curiosity of this eel and its reflection in Richard Stoneport. Again, if we zoom in, this image is tack sharp. I'm really, really happy with these results. Considering this image was taken at f4, the autofocus of the lens is doing great. Back at the hot water outflow pipes at this site, I thought it was a good time to test geometric distortion on this lens. Underwater, I actually think the results are better than what I get on land. There really isn't much geometric distortion to speak of. And even here, this was really close to some bent rebar. For how bent those rebars are, they're looking pretty darn straight in that photo. Now, corner sharpness is always an issue with underwater photography. This image at F4 shows that problem. You can see we really don't have very sharp corners, but this is also a worst case scenario as the lens is wide open. Stop it down to F10, as in this image, and you can see things really do become much, much sharper, definitely usable. That said, in practice, even shooting at F4, I really did not find an issue. I thought all the images I got were usable in terms of corner sharpness, and if I wanted more corner sharpness, I can always stop things down even more. And at 35 millimeters, corner sharpness really was not an issue at all. It was only at the ultra wide end of things. Now, I normally don't photograph fish because it's really difficult to do with my fisheye lens, but I was able to with this lens because the autofocus was just so solid. At 35 millimeters, this Moorish idol is tack sharp. We can see details in the eyes, we can see the spines and the fins, and we can see scales down towards the bottom of the fish. I could not ask for more for a lens that is working with my EOS R, which by no means is a top of the line body. <laughs> So I'm gonna translate my verdict here for you guys. Long story short, this lens is impressive on land and it is equally impressive underwater. I found myself shooting ultra wide at 14 millimeters and enjoying it, but I also found myself punching in close at 35 millimeters to capture some of the smaller life on our reefs here. I also found myself shooting abstract shots that I never would normally take with my fisheye lens that really helped me do a better job of capturing the mood and the environment that I love so much. And when the moment came that a single solitary turtle, the only one of the day swam by, I was able to trust this lens to help me get the shot that I wanted, and I really couldn't ask for more. So if you're looking for a lens that is not too expensive, but also not necessarily the cheapest lens out there, I cannot recommend this setup enough. I really, really enjoy the RF 14 to 35, and I hope you do too. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. If you do like this video, let me know so I know to make more of them going forwards. And again, I want to say thank you so much to Ikelite for making this test possible. Without getting to borrow that dome port extension, I would not have been able to test this, but I can say now that this is going to be my go-to underwater lens. With that, I hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you next time. Thank you.